So, um, indicator. We now need to add indicator to our flask. What are we titrating? We're titrating oxalic acid with sodium hydroxide. Oxalic acid is a weak acid, sodium hydroxide is a strong base. So the conjugate salt left behind at the equivalence point will be slightly basic. So we need to choose an indicator whose end point is close to the pH at equivalence point. So we chose um, phenolphthalein. 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 <laughs> um, phenolphthalein uh, will turn color from pink at high pH at pHs beyond 10 to clear at pHs below 8. So that is suitable for our slightly basic salt. Now the amount to add is only, you only need about two drops. Make it three, four. Don't add too much because um, by adding too much, remember chemical indicators themselves are weak acids and bases. So you're actually altering the pH slightly by adding a chemical indicator. So I've added three drops there. Hopefully that's enough. Let's give it a 12 just to make it very clear colour. So it obviously starts off basic because we put the um, put the base in the in the flask. Now let's start our rough titration. We need about 20 mils. That's what I know because that's how I've set it up. I designed my primary standard to be around the same concentration in terms of hydrogen ions, um, but it's a diprotic acid, so half the concentration of oxalic acid. I've set it around that. So that allows me to um, conclude that I need about the same volume. If there's 20 mils of the base here, I need about 20 mils up here of the, of the primary standard. So I'm starting at 15. All right? Remember eye level to look at the, the mark. Um, starting at about 15 mils. I need to get down to around 35 mils. So let's do our rough titration. And we'll start paying attention at about 30. about 30 now. We've stopped it and we'll give it a 12. You can see that it's still basic, which is exactly what we expect. Let's jump to about 33 and then we'll give it another 12. Remember this is only a rough titer, so I don't need to be too accurate. You can see it's getting slightly lighter pink, which means I'm getting close. At 33, still not, still not past the end point. So let's jump to 35, which is about should be about right. At 35, which means we've added 20 mils, which is about what we're expecting. It's still it's still basic. So we should be close. Let's add another two or three mils. At 37 which means we've added 22 mils, still basic. 38. Very close, ooh, very, very close. So see, it's light pink now. It used to be very um, fuchsia. It used to be much darker pink. I think one more drop will do it. Although this is a rough tartar, I'm getting pretty accurate, so I got lucky. One drop. And it's clear. So, see how clear that is? <laughs> um, so we got down to uh, we got down to 38.1. 38.1, which we started at 15. So that's 23.1 mils. 23.1 mils for our rough tire. I'm going to write that down, and then we'll do this again. So we're now back with the. Um, the flask has now been cleaned with distilled water, thoroughly rinsed, so we can use it again. Um, the pipette has not been washed since our last, since the last time we rinsed it with um, with the solution. That's okay because we're going to use this pipette to draw out sodium hydroxide again, the same sodium hydroxide. So that's what we'll be doing now. Draw it up until the mark. Be very careful. So go past the mark and push it down until it's at the mark. And it's at mark. Good. And just 
actually let it um, let it into my conical flask. Now this bit, the last drop, do not force. Whatever gravity by itself, unassisted gravity, can get into the flask, that goes in. Anything other than that does not belong. So the rest does not belong. The reason why is this is calibrated volumetric flaskware, so glassware. <laughs> so um, they've taken that into account when they when they um, when the glass was liquid and they were blowing gas at, at a specific volume and everything, and they took that into account. So if you actually force the last bit of liquid into your flask, you would get slightly more than 20 mils. So you didn't want that. We had two or three drops of phenolphthalein because our conjugate salt at the equivalence point is slightly basic, so we choose this indicator because it's appropriate. One, two, three drops. That's quite enough. So we see here that exactly 20, 23.1 mils of the standard was enough to make this completely clear, just completely clear, and it turned with one drop. Okay, so 23.1 mils, just like our rough titer, very close. Okay, that's a good sign. That means our rough titer, we um, got very, very close. So again, we start again. We'll rinse this and I'll come back. Okay. Here's our third titer. Let's start again. We've refilled the burette. And we're starting at 18.6. 18.6, we're expecting around 23 mils. So 18.6 23.1 uh, would be 41. What's the last digit? 41.7. <laughs> 41 41.7. So we're expecting this to run down to around 41.7. Okay. Um, 23.1. Yep. So let's let it run down to about 40, and then we'll start paying very close attention. We'll pay very close attention. Let's give this a quick squirt swirl. Yep, still pink, still basic. Not at the equivalent point yet. Now, one drop at a time. One, two, two drops. Nope. Careful not to capture that last drop. pink now, probably one or two more drops will do it. See, still light pink, one more drop will do it, guaranteed. That's right, just one drop. <laughs> and it's clear. So our final reading is 41... 41.7. <laughs> Very close. 41.7. We started at 18.6. Probably have a look. I'm not cheating here. <laughs> Maybe come around here and uh, have a look at this. Uh, around here, yeah. So we started at 18.6, and we have here 41.7, which is 23.1 mils. Exactly the same as our first titer, and also our rough titer. A rough titer shouldn't be this accurate, but I got lucky. I got it down to the single drop. So, so far we've got 23.1, 23.1, 23.1. Record our results. <laughs>